cannot give you back your homes or restore your dead to life, but perhaps I can give you justice in the name of our king. Hey everyone, I've been getting a lot of requests about doing a video on Patch Face. So as always, if you're not caught up with the books or the show, and do not wish to hear spoilers, this is your warning. Okay, so for the book readers, Patch Face is not a foreign character. However, the character's role in the show is non-existent, but in my opinion, I feel he is very important to discuss. Let me give you a background. Patch Face is a fool from Volantis that gets his freedom bought by Stefan Baratheon, the father of Robert Stannis and Renly when he is in Essos looking for a proper bride for Prince Rhaegar. The king, the old king, Ares II Targaryen, who had not been quite so mad in those days, had sent his lordship to seek a bride for Prince Rhaegar, who had no sisters to wed. We have found the most splendid fool, he wrote Cresson, a fortnight before he was to return home from his fruitless mission. Only a boy, yet nimble as a monkey and witty as a dozen courtiers, he juggles in riddles and does magic, and can sing prettily in four tongues. We have bought his freedom and hope to bring him home with us. Robert will be delighted with him, and perhaps in time he will even teach Stannis how to laugh. Patchface had green and red squared tattoos on his face that was common to slaves and servants in Volantis. And from the previous passage, we know that he was beyond clever for his age and purpose. Also, note that he riddles and performs magic. That will come up later. Lord Stefan decided to bring him back to Storm's End to be the court fool. During the venture back, Stefan Baratheon's ship broke apart in Shipbreaker Bay, within sight of Storm's End. Everyone died including the Lord Baratheon, his wife, and all 100 of his crew and soldiers. Patchface's body washed up on the shore after three days, and his body was white, clammy, and cold. He was presumed dead, but he coughed up water and somehow was all of a sudden revived. The important part is that Patchface was never the same mentally. He trembled and twitched as well as he lost most of his wit, and even was incoherent the majority of the time. Needless to say, whatever happened to him during those few days at sea, something definitely changed him. Some people thought that he received some form of help from Merman, and most of the people who later interact with him on a regular basis actually wonder if they should have let him die. Patchface is hired to be the court fool at Dragonstone, and he mostly spends his time with Shireen Baratheon, Stannis Baratheon's daughter. This is where Patchface, or Patches as called by Shireen, becomes rather interesting. He often sings songs to Shireen and others with seemingly prophetic wording. Patchface has quite a bit of dialogue in the books, where he is either mentioned or appears in four novels from the series. His riddles have a pattern too. While he says various things, many of his rhymes include the phrase under the sea. Before I even get into them, I just want to say it's kind of disturbing because he was presumably dead for days at sea and now since his revival, he is a changed person spitting out riddles with links to the ocean. That's it, I just think it is intriguing. Okay, let's start with the rhymes. Under the sea, the birds have scales for feathers. I know, I know. So what does this mean? It makes sense that no one can understand him. I think all of the quotes I will list, this is the most important one. Why? Because it may just be the rhyme that details the very thing he's referring to. We can assume he is referring to literally what goes on under the sea since he has a prophetic knowledge of it now that he technically died in the ocean, but if that's the case he would be saying fish are the birds of the ocean or something along those lines. But a popular theory that has been around for almost as long as the books have that the phrase under the sea is the key to the rhyme and that it refers to Valyria which is currently underwater from the doom or volcanic eruption 400 years ago. If you don't know too much about Valyria, I made a video about it that describes the event and history. But anyways, if under the sea means Valyria, then the birds with scales are dragons. That's gotta be it. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Dragons originated in Valyria, and Valyria is under the sea now. So now that we have a pretty solid translation for under the sea, let's continue. Under the sea, no one wears hats. 
Now, Patchface says this when Selyse is telling Maester Cresson to put Patch's jester crown on. If hats are translated from crown, then this fits well with the Valyria reference because during the Valyria days, there was no king or queen. Rather, the Valyrian freehold was ruled by noble families of dragon lords. It is always summer under the sea. The merwives wear ninny moans in their hair and weave gowns of silver seaweed. I know, I know. It was always summer in Valyria, probably because of how far south the Valyrian Peninsula was and the fact that Valyria had 14 giant volcanoes keeping it anything but cold. Also, ninny moans are purple flowers and silver seaweed is silver, obviously. Purple and silver. Possibly the purple eyes and the silver hair of Valyrians? But the rhyme says merwives. Does that mean merwives stand for Valyrians? Well, it is a tiny reach, but merman are half fish, and Valyrians are said to be half dragon, and the closest relation to a half man, half dragon in the ocean would probably be merfolk. Under the sea it snows up, and the rain is dry as bone. I know, I know. Under the sea, smoke rises and bubbles, and flames burn green and blue and black. This one is easy, the doom of Valyria, the massive volcanic eruption that destroyed the Valyrian Peninsula. The crow, the crow, under the sea the crows are white as snow. I know, I know, oh, oh, oh. At this point, Patchface is rhyming to Jon Snow. The white crows could be a reference to the Night's Watch, maybe north of the wall, or even white walkers. It could also be a forewarning of the seasons changing by switching black ravens with white ravens. I don't know, tell me what you think on this one. Under the sea, the merman feast on starfish soup, and all the serving men are crabs. Under the sea, men marry fishes. Under the sea, the old fish eat the young fish. Here we eat fish. Under the sea, the fish eat us. I know, I know. These last little under the sea riddles are greatly argued about, so go ahead and tell me what you believe these are referring to. There are quite a few other riddles Patchface tells us not referring to under the sea. Here is one of them. Clever bird, clever man, clever, clever fool. Patches says this when speaking to a white raven and Maester Crescent. White ravens are the best trained and smartest ravens in the known world. Maesters are the most educated people in the world also. So it makes sense that they would be called clever by Patchface. But then he says clever, clever fool, which is in reference to himself. What is he meaning by this? Maybe that he has special abilities like his prophetic mind that makes him the most clever of the group. I really like that quote because it separates Patches from all other characters interacted with him. He is fully aware even though being reportedly broken and changed by his death at sea. Patchface might have an ulterior motive when the story is all said and done. He is even too disturbing and unpredictable by Melisandre's standards. She says this to Jon Snow. That creature is dangerous. Many a time I have glimpsed him in my flames. Sometimes. There are skulls about him, and his lips are red with blood. What could be so dangerous about him? What are we not understanding about the court full of Dragonstone? There are more rhymes and riddles that Patchface says, but since most of you have only seen the show, I do not want to ruin or spoil every single one of his quotes, so feel free to look them up on your own or even go finish reading the books. And let me know your thoughts in the comments if you think any of the riddles represent something else. I would love to hear your input. Have a great day everyone, thanks for watching, and I will see you tomorrow.